Morning everyone, it's, God, what day is it? Um, Friday, it's Friday morning, half past nine. Uh, I'm live, so if you're joining me live any moment, then obviously you'll know it's Friday, but uh, so far, nobody online. What's actually happening today is I am parked in a car park on an industrial estate in Norwich, and uh, there is a little pop-up caravan or center or whatever by any car.com and uh, I'm here today potentially selling the mini um, I did say in a previous video that I was going to sell the car and that was because motorway offered me a really good deal but motorway screwed me around um, one week they'd offer me twenty five and a half thousand pounds the next week they'd offer me twenty three thousand pounds and um, I let R go through their auction system at the twenty three something presuming that their low figure would jump back up to twenty five if that's the genuine value of the car but uh, it didn't and so I found out later the reserve price that they put on it which is the price they tell you is actually given to all the potential buyers so they know what the reserve is and therefore they only bid a few hundred pounds over it as their maximum so even though the car might be worth 24 or 25 you weren't going to get any bids more than 23 so it was a bit fixed in my opinion um, anyway um, a week later um, after not proceeding with the sale they sent me more emails saying your car is worth 25,400 pounds and uh, we have people waiting to buy it now um, you know you think usual spam sort of thing but the way they worded it was they actually had dealers that they'd contacted about the car they had shown interest at that price level so i called them up and asked and basically they reneged on those sort of prices saying oh no that's just automated uh, messages coming out we can't uh, put a reserve on above 24 given what offers we had for your car last time and it just makes me think that um, these values that they're coming up with are completely manufactured um, and they just want to sell the car. So whatever process they're going through, they're guaranteeing they, they sell the car and you're not necessarily getting the best price, which is what they're telling you. Anyway, um, I researched around and I looked at Kazoo. Somebody online recommended Kazoo and uh, they offered a really good price as well. But when I looked into it, their system of selling involved you letting go of the car and they pay you later. Um, I didn't like the idea that motorway were better where the dealer representative turned up and uh, waited to pick up hi from Poland <laughs> Rafael if that's how you pronounce it um, yeah I, I was happy with motorway because you basically didn't let go of the keys of the car um, until you actually had money in your bank account so it, I didn't go with kazoo either and then all of a sudden we buy any car um, contacted me because um, I had inquired on their value of the mini for a a few months earlier and said the price had gone up and lo and behold they're now offering the best value price so i'm here and we'll see what happens we'll see whether they uh, do stick to that price or whether they try to barter me down i don't know whether i've exceeded their limit time for that offer though um, initially when they offered me a value it was more than four days ago and i think they keep their values for four days but i updated the details of the car um, including that it's got no previous owners i've got both keys all those sort of things and uh, updated the um, condition of the car and they increased the value so i've had an increased value from them within four days so i'm sort of outside of their guarantee of that price but i'm also sort of within so i don't know what's going to happen this is um exciting um within an hour from now i could be without an electric car and it's a really really odd feeling because we're due to go away soon and we were looking forward to going away in the mini and now if we do sell this we'll be going away in susan's mini and we took her mini out a little while ago which is a, a petrol mini and I can't believe the road noise um, when she's driving around 55 to 65. The road noise from her petrol mini is just so much more than this electric car. Um, it seems to be more insulated on the front. So I'm really not looking forward to a longer distance trip in the petrol mini. I mean, it's a lovely car, um, but it, it's just not like my electric mini. It's not as good. So I'm a bit mad, I think, trying to sell it. Um, the big question is why um i feel like i should be doing an, another video on the what car to buy because there's so many electric cars that interest me and it's so easy to get carried away and today's a great idea great great example of 
potentially getting carried away because the Tesla Model Y is launched in the UK today. And there will be people that were clicking on it now today instantly because they've been like clicking on it for a year or so. <laughs> They're going to click, buy, 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 buy. And there's a bit of madness about when there's a new model. Got to have it. Got to have the new model. And I, I was sort of caught up in that with the Hyundai Kona. And you, you get a sense that something new and exciting, you want it. But the price keeps creeping up. So you have to keep a level head and start to think, well, what do I want a car for? And for some people, space in the back seats, because they're carrying people, is all they're concerned about. In, in which case, yeah, that their choice of car is compromising their enjoyment of the drive, the efficiency of the car, all, all sorts of other things. So is it boot space? Is carrying stuff to the tip and luggage space the most important thing to you? Is rear seat passenger space the most important thing to you? Is the seat comfort the most important thing to you? For me, the seat height on the passenger side has to be adjustable, otherwise Susan doesn't like being in the car. So that's an essential for me. So there's lots of things that um, will be essential to you, but when something like the Mini comes up, it's not a particularly big car. It hasn't got a big boot. It hasn't. It isn't easy to put shopping in the car. It is a compromise, a huge compromise. So things that you one day say are important to you suddenly become compromisable because something else is better. And for me, it's the efficiency, the performance and the handling of the car and just the smile factor really, really makes it um, that nothing else seems to matter. You're happy with the compromise of how small and cramped the car is. But then having said that, I had a good debate with Susan the other day about the Kona. You know, why did she dislike the Kona so much um, when I loved it? And she basically came up with, it's when we go for picnics at the beach and we're sat with our flask of coffee and uh, a box of cakes or something. And we're having a little picnic in the car in the winter, that sort of thing, where we're eating inside the car. She says the dash slopes at an odd angle, uh, do it that way, <laughs> so that things fall off in front of you. You can't put your, your mug on the dash. And the Mini is smaller and there's less space to put things, but she feels that when we're doing that, there's more space to spread things around on the flatter surfaces. And it made me think, well, don't we just need to buy like a TV tray for it then <laughs> for the car? But for her, that at that moment when we were talking about it, that was a make or break. So anyway, where am I going with this? Well, it's really hard to decide what car I really want because every now and then you get attracted to, like the Skoda Enyaq that I drove, was so comfortable and the tech was great. And you think about the shopping trips are easy and going away on holiday is all fantastic but it compromises that daily drive and fun of just nipping around quickly and easily that we have in the Mini, even with its lower range. So there's a lot of compromises and which compromise are you gonna go with? Now, I'm not saying I'm fed up with the compromise of the Mini. I am not saying that. Um, like I said, I, th I think I need to do a separate video to say, what am I gonna buy or what am I considering buying and why? And go through that decision process because you're not gonna be aware of what my priorities are and Sometimes I'm not aware of what my priority is. Um, <laughs> but anyway, we, we will see. I, I sort of have a plan. Um, I sort of have a car in mind. But every now and then, something like I, I peruse what's available as stock cars for a Polestar 2. And you go, ooh, that, that's nice. <laughs> I really would like one of those. And I've never driven a Polestar 2 because they don't put their test drive events in ready east anglia or anywhere near norfolk so i haven't had the opportunity to test drive one yet but really really appeals so even though i've sort of got a plan of what i want i'm sort of drawn towards the enyaq and the polestar 2 and and even this morning the model y you look at it oh yeah in red and with those turbine wheels but then common sense kicks in anyway um I've decided to go for it. The reason why I am selling the Mini today, if they honour their price, is because I will have lost only £1,080 from buying it in a year's use. And I'm happy to bank that depreciation and say thank you very much for a year of driving for £1,000 and uh, I'll move on to the next car. Um, it just seems like a sensible decision to me. It's an opportunity to let the car go because new car prices haven't inflated. So I should be able to get another car if I wait a little while. So I'm compromising not having an electric car for a little bit. 
potentially, although I am expecting a phone call any moment from BMW. I saw an i3 yesterday that I really, really like. Uh, Inchscape Norwich, not my favourite dealer. Um, I, I actually abide them, to be honest, but the spec of that car looks lovely. So I might actually go up there today because it's only got 1,000 miles on the clock. It's used. It's in stock now. It's a this year car, and it is the spec that I, I would definitely be clicking and buying. So I'm curious. I might go and test drive that today i might be buying a bmw i3 so like i said i'm swinging around left and right i don't really know what's going on but i've made the decision to try and sell the car anyway um that's today's update thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed the video and the journey that i'm on i know i'm a bit quirky and i like changing my car um i love cars i love electric cars and um I don't mind spending a bit more on them um, every now and then. Um, it's one of my passions. So I know it's sort of bad keeping... <laughs> you did not buy that car 30 minutes ago. <laughs> I know it's sort of bad for the environment to keep buying new products so often, but you've got to look on the positive side also, that the more I am buying electric cars, the more they are selling and the more cars are on the market. I'm encouraging more people to go electric and driving that forwards. So although there is an environmental impact on me personally, I'll keep having new cars. I think there's some positives to it. So that side doesn't really worry me at all. This year's car for sale already. Alarm bells should ring. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter that it's this year's car for sale. Lots of people sell cars for all sorts of reasons. I saw a Jaguar I-Pace the other day that looked really nice, and it had 200 miles on it, I think, and it was a 2019 car. Uh, basically, it was an elderly person that had been struck down with COVID or had to be restricted through COVID and hadn't driven the car, and eventually decided they weren't driving it, so they were letting it go. Unique reasons for selling a car always pop up. Um, people buy them at, with a whim, like me, and they sell them with a whim, I think. Anyway, Colin from Corby, I'm not quite sure what you're trying to say, but um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens today. Anyway, I'm now going to sign off and go and see this guy and see if I sell the car. Uh, it's a shame I can't do all this live. If I had a like a lapel mic and a camera on here, it would be really good wouldn't it, to see what the sales process is really like. Anyway, that's not going to happen, so um, I'll update you later as to what goes on. Watch on Twitter. Take care. See you again soon. Bye for now.